Hey fam, how we doing again today? Minister Greg coming back, uh, continuing the 40 day of prayer campaign as we lead up to this election uh, day, dear Lord. Um, today we will be coming from the book of Romans chapter 13, verse one. And it reads for your hearing as such. Let everyone submit to the governing authorities. Since there is no authority except God and the authorities that exist are instituted by God. Hey fam, look, I got to be honest with you. I struggled on this one, right? Because I don't know about you guys, um, but I am frightened, just a little bit terrified when I look at the state of the government today. 200,000 plus people dead, killed by this pandemic. Primarily because we have not been given solid information, good information from the beginning. No matter how bad it may seem, you know, if people are given the proper information, we can then take the proper precautions to protect ourselves and our loved ones. But we weren't afforded that luxury. The misinformation or conflicting information, at least uh, being spewed by government officials is just leading to all types of chaos and confusion. Stallworth institutions, you know, such as the Center for Disease Control and the Food and Drug Administration becoming so highly politicized, you know, seemingly, you know, to fit, you know, a, a, a political agenda for a particular party. You know, now this rush to nominate and confirm, you know, a Supreme Court justice prior to the election taking place. I mean, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember back in 2016 when Brother Barack you know, nominated uh, Merrick Garland uh, to replace uh, that Supreme Court justice seat. There was a lot of uproar. There was a lot of hoopla, you know, about allowing the people to decide. So now here we are within 40 days of this election cycle, this election day coming about. And now there's all of a sudden an urgency to fulfill this seat. What happened to allowing the people to weigh in, casting our vote for the next president to see who will be responsible as that person will be responsible for making the selection of this lifetime appointment. Guys, look, I don't know about you, but for me, any given day, this is just way too much to fathom. But I am glad I am elated. I am joyful that the Bible I read every day shows me a little bit of good news, shows me a little bit of hope, shows me a, a, a vision of what's to come, how God laid it out. You see, in this scripture, you know, Peter instructs us to submit to the governing authorities. But more important, he affirms that there are no authorities except God. And these earthly authorities or government fi figures that do exist have been instituted or put in place by God. Therefore, for those of us who read the same good news Bible that I do and can exhibit just a little bit of faith, we can rest assured that all the crazy, nonsensical, harmful, hurtful things that we see this government and their enablers doing now in the cloak of darkness will indeed come to light one day. I know that there are a lot of people being impacted by the decisions of today, but I know that judgment is not mine. It's the Lord's and the Lord's alone. That is because someday each and every one of us, person for person, will have to stand before God and give an accounting of our earthly actions. And no matter how much you try to sway and persuade God of your intentions, he knows your heart. It's the same thing I used to tell my kids when they were growing up. You can tell me anything you want to, but be honest with yourself. When it's when when these things that are done in the dark for selfish personal reward come to light, there will be restitution for all of us. Keep your faith, brothers and sisters. You know, don't give up hope. Maybe maybe this government needed some exposing, you know, in order to bring on some healing. You know, I'm reminded in Chronicles 13. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. In, in Chronicles of uh, Second Chronicles 15. Um, three through seven that, you know, the people of Israel were without a true God for many years. You know, no teaching priest, no instruction being given. But when they turned to the Lord God of Israel in their distress and they sought him, he was found by them. God is always there. We just have to seek him. 
and we'll find him. In verse seven of that chat of that uh, scripture, you know, it goes on to say, um, but as far as you be strong, don't give up for your work has reward. And that's the message that I have for you all today. Don't give up, folks. Harvest is on the other side of this. Don't succumb to the perils and, you know, misdeeds of this government and continue to seek God. That is what's going to keep us grounded. That's what's going to keep us spiritually safe during this season. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Lord. I thank you, dear Lord, for this is the day that you have made, dear Lord. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. This is the day that you have made, dear Lord. You have bestowed upon us all new graces and new mercies in this day, dear Lord. So, dear Lord, it's on this day, dear Lord, that I ask you, soften the hearts of those in power, in political power, dear Lord, for I know you are the only one in true power. But soften the hearts of those who are in political power, dear Lord. Allow them to govern for all, not for those who just voted for them, dear Lord. Dear Lord, those people were put in those positions for a reason. If that reason, dear Lord, which I have no I have no ability to question you as for the reasons why you have those people in those positions, but just, dear Lord, allow for the exposure for whatever it is to take place sooner than later, dear Lord, so there'll be no more suffering endured by the people of this country or the people of this globe by the actions or inactions that this government, dear Lord, is taking today. Dear Lord, I come praying right now for the comfort, dear Lord, for everybody that has been impacted by some of the atrocities bestowed beyond, beyond this government, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I come praying right now for the people within this government, dear Lord, that their hearts and their minds are softened, dear Lord, that they hear your call, dear Lord, that if they are the evangelicals and the Catholics and Christians that we say that we are, dear Lord, that we all do what we can, dear Lord, in order to show and walk in a Christian or in a Christ-like walk, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I ask that you come before every lawmaker, dear Lord, every school board member, dear Lord, every politician, dear Lord, and, and, and whisper to them, dear Lord, to just do the right thing, dear Lord, and allow your will to be done from that moment moving forward, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I come again asking for comfort for everyone in this country on this day, dear Lord. I come asking, dear Lord, that you... That, that you bestow in everyone's heart that is of age to vote. Give them the courage to go out and vote, dear Lord, because their voice does matter. Dear Lord, it's your voice that matters the most. And I am going to continue to do all I can, dear Lord. And I implore everybody to do, they same, to do the same, to hear your voice, dear Lord, as we continue to move through these tumultuous times. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen.